Dorothy Taubman was an American piano teacher and the founder of the Taubman Piano Institute. She developed the Taubman approach to piano playing, which is based upon an analysis of the motions needed for virtuosity and musical expression. She used to be called the underground teacher because students from Juilliard and other conservatories would sneak off to Brooklyn to study privately with her, and they found solutions to technical and musical problems they were facing. They discovered that tension-free playing leads to virtuosity. Tension-free playing also leads to a healthy, coordinate piano technique. The Galatsky Piano Institute, founded in 2003, is now the preeminent center for the teaching of the Talman approach. My name is John Bloomfield. I'm a faculty chairman of the Galatsky Institute, and I wanted to explain a little bit about what the Talman approach is. Dorothy Taubman was a piano teacher in Brooklyn, New York in the 20th century, and she revolutionized our concept of what it means to have a healthy piano technique. I wanted to talk a little bit about what her basic foundational concept was and elaborate on it just slightly today. It's a complex study. Playing any instrument is a study of motion, and of course, that involves many different facets aspects of moving around, but if we start with a very basic um, idea of what it is to play uh, the piano in a healthy way, we're going to talk about having the arm, the hand, and fingers in one piece. So if you would just let your arm hang down by your side like this, you'll find that that feels quite comfortable. And then if we bring that up, we'll see that there's a particular alignment that the arm, the hand, and the fingers have. And that is our natural alignment that occurs the same way in everybody's body. The whole idea is that we want to use the arm, the hand, and fingers in one piece when we play the piano. And anything that interferes with this idea of the arm, hand, and fingers in one piece is going to make it more difficult to move. So let's try a few things together and I'll show you exactly what I mean. If you'll hold your arm, hand, and fingers up in one piece like this, no breaking at the wrist, everything nice and natural here, and just move the fingers up and down, you'll have what we can call a baseline sense of freedom for the fingers. Now we'll do a few things that make that freedom, uh, that compromise that freedom. So for example, if we cock the hand back like this and try to move the fingers up and down, you'll experience that that is more difficult. Everybody try that. And then if you spread the fingers apart, stretch the fingers like this, and try to move them up and down, you'll find that that's more difficult than having them in their natural configuration. Same thing if we twist the hand away from the arm like this. You'll find that it's more difficult to move the fingers if the hand is twisted than if the hand is straight. If we curl the fingers and move them up and down, that's more difficult for everybody than if the finger is in the natural position. So all of these motions can interfere with the natural facility that we all have. And I would say that these are the four big motions to watch out for. So if the hand, or the wrist, I should say, collapses like this, as you very often see at the keyboard, it makes it difficult for the fingers to move up and down. If the fingers spread apart to conquer distances, it makes it more difficult to move. If the hand's fingers curl in order to bring the long fingers into the white key area, that makes it difficult to move. And if the hand twists in order to bring the short fingers into the black key area, that makes it more difficult to think for the fingers to move. So we have to find ways of negotiating the territory of the keyboard that prevent these um, motions that are harmful to a technique. And that's what learning to play the piano is all about. How do we keep the natural configuration of the arm, hand, and fingers so that we're always able to move in the most natural and freest way? The interesting thing about it is that our bodies are made the same way, so even though we may express ourselves differently at the keyboard, uh, we may have different ideas about music, everybody's going to feel better if the arm, hand, and fingers work as a unit, rather than if that unit is compromised. Now, some typical ways that the unit, uh, typical places, I should say, that the unit can be compromised. When we have all white keys, for example, in a C major scale, it's very, very tempting to curl those long fingers so that we come into the white key area of the keyboard with curled fingers rather than with the fingers in their normal relationship to each other. 
The answer for that is to bring the arm, head, and finger combination towards the body so that the longer fingers go into the white key area without any compromise in terms of having them curled. It's very natural for kids to do this, for adults to do this. And one of the things that unfortunately makes it natural for us to do that is we sometimes come to the piano with an orientation of curled fingers in the first place. So for example, if we're taught to hold a ball or hold an apple, when we go to the keyboard in our first lesson, we already have the idea that there's something natural about curling the fingers, when indeed that's not natural for the body at all. The first thing to learn is that we want to bring the playing apparatus, that is arm, hand, fingers, to the keyboard all in one piece in the same way that they occur when the arm is hanging beside the body this way. So, doing that, we see immediately that if the thumb is on the keyboard, the longer fingers are slightly in the black key area. If we learn to bring those longer fingers into the white key area by moving the arm out as a whole and then moving it back in as a whole when the thumb has to play again, it makes the playing much easier because the fingers are never compromised. Playing an instrument, like everything else that we do in life, is a question of habit. Uh, if right habits are learned from the beginning, it's very easy to manage difficulties at the instrument. And if wrong habits are learned at the beginning, it becomes ever more challenging as the music gets more and more demanding. So one of the things that we want to be sure about when we come to the piano is that we learn to observe that the playing apparatus, that is this arm, hand, finger unit, never changes its relationships. And I would say that if you can observe that when you're playing or when you're helping someone else, you're already way ahead of the curve because you're set up to move in a quick way when there are no compromises in the alignment. If there are compromises in the alignment, no amount of practicing is going to make things feel better. You may be able to get through pieces, you may be able to force yourself through, but it won't feel good and there's going to be some price to pay in terms of physical comfort in terms of speed, in terms of accuracy, in terms of uh, relationship to the instrument that um, is not necessary. In other words, if we come to the instrument with our natural setup, then it's going to be easier to negotiate any task we have.